So yesterday, Microsoft pledged to protect and defend Linux and to no longer pursue Linux developers and Linux uh, projects that break any of Microsoft's 60,000 patents. No, no, no. They're up to something. I know they're up to something. That can't be right. You must have misunderstood that. It's all a trick. It's gotta be a trick. That's rubbish. That's fake news. You can't trust them. You've never been able to trust Microsoft. I'm speechless. Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explained. And today we're going to look at the news that Microsoft has joined the Open Invention Network. Now the Open Invention Network was basically an organization set up to defend open source projects, particularly to defend Linux. And its members include people like Google and people like IBM. And what they've done is they've pulled together their resources in terms of patents and said that we are gonna use these patents to fight against companies that show aggression towards Linux and aggression towards open source projects. Now, if there was ever a company that did show aggression towards uh, open source projects and aggression towards Linux, that really was Microsoft. Now, the history of the battle between Microsoft and open source software and Linux is long. Let's go back some 20 years and we get a revelation called the Halloween documents. Now these documents basically explained Microsoft's mindset when it comes to Linux. Here's a quote from one of the documents. Open source software poses a direct short-term revenue and platform threat to Microsoft, particularly in the server space. Additionally, the intrinsic parallelism and free idea exchange in open source software has benefits that are not replicable with our current licensing model and therefore present a long-term developer mindshare threat. And you have to pretty much agree that is actually what is the difference between the open source model and the closed source model. And what Microsoft wrote back then in 1998 is absolutely correct. Of course, how they reacted with that is to fight aggressively against open source. So for example, in 2001, uh, Steve Ballmer, the then CEO of Microsoft called Linux a cancer. And his idea was that everything it touched got infected by this open source licensing, by the, by the GPL and so on. Then there are other instances, for example, where Microsoft have been trying to influence open source or open standards to try to get their way in things. And they've basically been playing pretty much in the mud against open source. In fact, the great big battle between IBM and SCO, all about the patents and the copyright issues around Linux, many people say was funded by Microsoft in the background. So how does Microsoft go from Linux is cancer to we are now protecting and defending Linux? Well, there's a couple of things to notice. First of all, 20 years has gone past and Steve Ballmer is no longer the CEO of the company. Things have changed in terms of technology. Things have changed in terms of Microsoft's business model. For example, now we're talking about cloud computing and a big part of Microsoft revenue comes from its Azure cloud computing. Now, of course, the thing about cloud computing is that you have to offer Linux. You can't just run it all on Microsoft. So actually Microsoft started to support Linux in its cloud offerings. And in fact, in 2016, it joined the uh, Linux Foundation. Also in 2016, of course, we saw the advent of kind of the, the Linux subsystem for Windows. And of course, since then, Microsoft also changed its business uh, model as well. For example, now with Windows 10, we're getting these kind of six month updates that are free. The upgrade from Windows 7, Windows 8 to Windows 10 was all free. Doesn't mean that Microsoft is giving away Windows for free. The OEMs are still paying for it to install it on uh, laptops and things, but really they're moving away into a much more cloud centric view of the world. For example, Office 365 is their new attempt to bring the cloud into what was formerly their kind of off the shelf shrink wrapped kind of software solutions. And also Microsoft has embraced uh, open source in many ways. For example, it's .NET technology. A lot of that, the compiler of the core libraries are all open source. It owns Mono, which is open source. PowerShell is open source. TypeScript, which is their kind of super set of JavaScript, that's open source. In fact, Microsoft has over 2000 open source projects. Now, some of them are pretty small, but there are some pretty big ones amongst that number. And of course, the big 
blot on Microsoft's copybook is the fact that it actively pursued companies who were breaking its patents. So if you look at something like the FAT filing system, the file allocation uh, table file system, that is used inside Android, it's used on a Mac, it's used inside Windows itself, it's used on the humble flash disk that we find. It also owns the patents for XFAT, and Microsoft has pursued companies like Samsung, for example, and got out of them billions of dollars for a licensing for using things like the FAT file system. Now what Microsoft is saying is they're giving that all up. They've turned over a new leaf and they're no longer going to pursue people for those patent violations. Now, that obviously would cause some skepticism and maybe there are some bad parts of that and there are some good parts. Let's try to look at the positive aspects first of all. First of all, Microsoft are no longer going to ask people like Samsung for money for using FAT and XFAT as long as we're dealing, of course, inside the world of uh, Linux. If someone's using FAT or XFAT in some other project that's nothing to do with open source, a proprietary project, then I believe that Microsoft is still able and probably willing to go and get their patent, their royalty fees from that company. But in terms of Android, in terms of uh, Linux, Microsoft has said that's it, 60,000 patents are no longer going to be uh, used in this negative way. In fact, Nat Friedman, who will be taking over GitHub uh, for Microsoft, who become the CEO of GitHub once the final deal goes through, wrote this on Twitter. Microsoft is pledging our massive patent portfolio, over 60,000 patents, to Linux and open source by joining OIM this morning. If you're looking for signs that we are serious about being the world's largest open source company, look no further. A couple of people on Twitter then asked whether that it was really all of their patents or whether there were certain patents that applied to Windows or to other technologies that Microsoft were not licensing and Nat Friedman repeatedly said that it was all of Microsoft patents. So what this should mean is that things like XFAT and FAT and other technologies that are protected by Microsoft's patents can now work their way into Linux and other open source projects without fear of Microsoft actually pursuing the developers or the users of those uh, technologies for royalty claims. However, the negative part would be, well, what are Microsoft up to? Are they truly just looking to become the world's largest open source company? What about all the billions of dollars that they took from companies like Samsung? Are they going to give any of that back? Uh, are they just going to say, well, let's forget all of our past and let's just go on together as one big happy family? I think that there are a lot of people who would like to see Microsoft actually, you know, kind of make repairs for the damage that they've done. Although they've now got this new direction, they leave in their wake a whole trail of kind of debris and disaster that they had when they were suing and they were countersuits and they were taking money from a lot of companies. Now, it would be good if we saw them maybe made some kind of, kind of apologies or maybe some reparations to those companies in the background so that we can see that this is not just merely some kind of, you know, kind of theoretical switch in their head. They actually really mean it. And of course, there are skeptics who will say, well, hold on, uh, Microsoft must be trying to do something here. Maybe they're trying to kind of overtake open source by, you know, looking as if they're all friendly, but you can't trust uh, a wolf in sheep's clothing. Now, I think that's a little unfair. I think we have to consider two important things. First of all, we deal with Microsoft as a legal entity. We talk about it as a legal person. So Microsoft did this and Microsoft did that. But actually, of course, it is made up of people who are employed in that company, including the CEO, including the management, including all the way down to the engineers and the other people that work there. And I think over time, those people are thinking differently about how they should interact in the world of technology today, particularly about open source. So I think that the people who are in Microsoft do have a genuine different view of software today than the people that were employed there 20 years ago. And there have been lots of people who've left the company since then, even up at the top levels. I'm sure there are lots of new people who've joined the company and kind of the reality of Linux, the reality of open source is modeled this new version of Microsoft over the last 20 years. And secondly, really, you can't have a future without Linux and open source software. And we see this with their Azure cloud services, really, that the future is not to fight against open source, but it's actually to be an active member 
of the open source community. So actually, if you're just talking about dollars, if you're talking about, well, they want to make a profit, which they do because it's a company and that's what companies do. If they want to make a profit, then actually there's a greater profit to be made by becoming a friend of open source than becoming an enemy of open source. There's more dollars out there if Microsoft genuinely actually support open source rather than actually fight against it. So from a business point of view, it actually makes really good sense. Now, some of you are gonna be skeptical and I fully understand that. Some of you will not be able to forgive Microsoft for the last 20 years. But I think if we look at it in dollar terms, they're basically saying we used to get these billions of dollars from pursuing our patents against Android and Linux companies. We're no longer going to do that, which means they're losing billions of dollars of potential income. And instead, they're going to be focusing on protecting and defending Linux. Now, that is in dollars terms, in real terms, that is a huge commitment. It's not just a legal commitment. This is a financial commitment and this is a mindset commitment. Now, I have absolutely no contact with Microsoft whatsoever. I don't really know anybody that works there. I know a guy that knows a guy that knows a guy that works in Microsoft. I've never received any products from Microsoft free. I've never received any review units, not tablets, not phones, not laptops, not mice, not anything. I literally, Microsoft are not part of my life other than just I'm a consumer of Microsoft's products and services. So, you know, I think that what I'm saying is actually true. Of course, time will tell, but let's give Microsoft a chance. They've actually made a bold statement and let's see uh, how this goes now over the next uh, few years. Well, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Also, please don't forget to subscribe. Please share this video on social media and don't forget to hit that bell notification icon so that you get notified every time I drop a new video. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.